Welcome to the Strategy and Leadership Podcast, the podcast that brings you practical advice, lessons, and stories from senior leaders and thought leaders from around the world. The Strategy and Leadership Podcast is brought to you by SME Strategy, working with organizations around the world to create and implement their strategic plans. To learn more, visit smestrategy.net. And now, your host, Anthony Taylor. Hey there, folks. Welcome to today's episode of the Strategy and Leadership Podcast. My guest today is Lisa Lutoff Perlo, who is the former CEO at Celebrity Cruises. And he's wrote a new book, Making Waves, A Woman's Rise to the Top Using Smarts, Heart, and Courage, which I love that. Lisa, thanks so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure, Anthony. Great to be with you today. So tell me, you've been in the cruising industry for a long time. You've had a lot of different roles in there, in and out. Uh, Why don't you give our audience a little bit about your background, what led you to write the book, and then I'll get into some questions. Okay, sure. Um, I've been in the industry for almost 40 years, uh, 39 actually this year. So that's a long time. I started out at the very bottom in the company as a district sales manager, a salesperson calling on travel companies door to door in New England, where I'm from. And over 30 years, um, I have had different positions within the company. And I was appointed president and CEO of Celebrity in December of 2014. Um, and I had, have had a wonderful career in this industry that has grown tremendously. And I've got to do a lot of different things in the company, which I think prepared me very well for the president and CEO role. Um, and as you can imagine, I, um, was the first woman president and CEO in our company of one of our brands, the first woman in the C-suite. Our industry is about 100 years old. It's very male-dominated. And so, so many people along the way told me I needed to write a book. And uh, all the lessons I've learned and things that I've done, which was the catalyst to making waves, I wrote it um, and included a lot of the lessons told through stories in the hope that I can help other people as they're thinking through their own careers and their own aspirations. I love that. I think that's, I mean, it's about like sending the elevator back down, so to speak, but also in a, in a new industry and, you know, like when women leaders, or we should just say leaders, uh, but, you know, just all of that is so great. And I think that there's a lot, there's always a lot to learn. So um, I don't want to give away too much of the book because I encourage everybody to buy it if you, you know, like what he's talking about, but, you know, let, let's take it back. Uh, what was it like and we'll say just before you moved into the C-suite, like what was your experience as a leader? Uh, was it hard? Was it easy? Was it fun? Uh, and what were some of the things maybe that contributed to your success as you made waves, so to speak, within the organization? Well, it was certainly fun, but it was it also wasn't easy. You know, I um, I think that any of us that are navigating our way in our careers and thinking about where we want to go versus what we're doing right now and then all of the different ways to get there, you have to um, try different things, do different things. You don't always know everything about what you're doing. And my career was very much moving around the company and learning new things. I think the reason that I was chosen for a lot of the different positions that I've held throughout my long career uh, were based on the fact that I'm a driver, I get results, I, um, you know, I create good cultures, I think differently and transformatively. But oftentimes it wasn't because I was a subject matter expert in the areas that I was taking over. So I learned as well along my way, which is wonderful if you can be in an environment and in a company that believes in you and also helps you learn and grow um, and you know reach whatever your, your goals are. Yeah. Uh, how did you, uh, was it intentional that you wanted to kind of like go throughout the organization? Did you, you know, looking for opportunities, like what drove you personally to, to create that kind of explorative mindset? Great question, because I didn't really have a plan. I started in sales. My first promotion within the sales organization came four years after I started. It was a regional sales manager role. So I was responsible for other salespeople versus just being a salesperson. And I had to move to Miami. So the first thing I did was have I, you know, I had to be okay with leaving 
the place that I was born and raised and all my friends and family and uh, embark on this new adventure. For the entire 17 years I was in sales, I only wanted to be the head of sales. I never thought about being a president and CEO of one of our brands. But interestingly enough, um, one of the uh, one of the people that led the sales and marketing organization back in 2001 decided that I should go to marketing because he recognized, I guess, some talent in me that perhaps I didn't recognize in myself. And he thought I should go try other things in the company and expand my experience so that I would be a more valuable leader and that I would be able to do more in different things. The you know, I don't, I didn't think about being president and CEO of one of the brands um, probably until 2012, I believe, which was really far into my career. And it was after numerous moves into different departments, onto different brands, always at the, at someone's urging that I try different things. So I think that my career was unplanned, which in many ways, isn't bad because sometimes if you plan everything, you miss out on a lot because you're only focused on one direction, one thing, one aspiration, but you never know where your career or life is going to take you if you're just willing to try something new. And I think that's a big lesson that I learned because the first time I was moved from sales and marketing, I I wasn't happy. I really felt like it was a terrible thing and my career was over when in fact it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me and my career. That's awesome. So like unexpected benefits, unexpected success. There's a a line from a little Wayne song. He says the strength that comes without strategy. When you don't have a plan, it leaves you to kind of fundamentally endless possibilities. Um, right. So let, let me ask, like, obviously with one organization for 40 years now in you know 2024, uh, the general consensus is you can change jobs every two to three years so that you don't get, uh, so because you'll make more money statistically. Um, do you, um, obviously that wasn't the case back when you started your career. Did you know you always wanted to be in the kind of cruising industry? What is that? These opportunities kept presenting itself. You had no reason to leave because the, And I guess the why I'm asking the question is maybe some people have a track where they want to be the CEO of some company and they might say, do I stay in one organization, try to move around or do I hop around to get that experience? And I don't think there is a right answer, but just curious about what motivated you and drove you as you made your decisions. Well, I think you're right, Anthony. I don't think there's a, you know, there's a right or wrong answer, right? It's different for every person. The the interesting thing for me was being in this company, it was growing significantly and the industry was growing significantly. So then the opportunity was growing significantly. Multiple Mm -hmm. brands, multiple functions, huge operation, global operations. So there were so many different things you could do. And stay in a company for 39 years and not feel like it was 39 years. I still can't believe it when I say it. Up until the time I came into this company, I had jobs for about a year, a year each. I got tired. I got sick of it. I moved around. I wanted to go do something else. I thought that moving around, I would, you know, be able to advance my career in a different way. And I, again, ended up by accident in this amazing industry that I've now been a part of in one company for 39 years. And I will tell you, there are a lot of people in our industry, just like other industries, that move around. They move to different cruise lines. They move into progressive um, positions around the industry. And so they've never navigated their career in that way. I, you know, I guess I was fortunate um, in that I really love the company. We're we're the best in class in every one of our brands. We're the leader in the industry. So it was a great place for me to find a home. But I also know that especially now in 2024, I'm like a unicorn. You know, there's not many of us out there that believe that you should be in a company for 39 years. I think that people just need to make sure they're continuing to grow. It could be progressive positions. They could be learning more because at the end of the day, when you do that, you become more valuable to yourself. You become more valuable to any organization. And then, you know, you can um, participate in or take advantage of certain positions that come your way, whether they're in your company or not in your company. 
Yeah. It, it sounded like also along the journey that you were fortunate to have that, I won't say mentors, but people around you that encouraged you to stretch yourself, to, to grow beyond potentially what you knew. And then, of course, the timing of an, or, an organization that had upside. Um, is it fair to say that there were you, you had good managers that helped you along the way? And if not managers, yeah. you know. Yeah, you- I think advocates. I always call them advocates. You know, people that uh, saw talent in you and then used whatever position they were in to help advance you and give you different opportunities because they saw the talent and uh, and they also saw that you could do good things for certain roles and positions that they were looking to fill. And I've always tried to do the same thing. You know, a big part of my leadership style and a lesson I learned was to pay it forward, bring other people along with you, um, you know, help people take the elevator up with you because if you achieve something and you don't help others do the same thing, then what you've achieved is really kind of meaningless, meaningless and useless. I've, I've always taken the most joy in helping others accomplish their dreams as well, because I was fortunate that other people did that for me. And it was all men because there were all men in these positions and running the company at the time. So uh, I owe them a tremendous amount of gratitude for helping me accomplish what, you know, I never even thought of in my wildest dreams when earlier in my career. That's awesome. I mean, that's the power of a good leader who sees you for, you know, what you're, you're capable of. Um, I was curious about if, if you, um, I'll say intentionally look for advocates, you know, like people go out and they say, Hey, I need mentors. I need support or I need to build people. Or if, you know, those folks were doing it because they embodied the same leadership principles that you do now. Um, did you go out or were they largely, you know, just good managers that the organization had hired? I think a little bit of both. You know, I think that these uh, leaders came in with a mindset that they wanted to help people grow and advance in their career. And then I made sure that I, you know, was in front of them and that they saw whatever it is that I was accomplishing or doing. And it gave me the opportunity to um, present myself or promote myself. And, you know, I, I, I write about that a little bit because it's so important for everyone in their career to find people that can be advocates for them and help them advance in their career. And then also make sure that you let them know what you're doing because oftentimes we think that if we work hard and we get great results, people are going to notice and they're going to promote us or choose us for positions, you know, pluck us out of the air and put us in these different places. But that's not true. You really, you know, there's a lot of competition out there. You, you've you got to break through the clutter and you've got to run your own PR campaign. You know, you have to do it in a nice way, not in an obnoxious way, but you really do have to do it. And so I worked hard, I worked smart, but I also made sure I was you know, talking to and in front of people who I knew had the right influence and could help me achieve uh, different things throughout my throughout my career. Yeah, and I'm, these weren't your words, but you know, there is like the kind of the corporate ladder, the the work up, and again, like for you as and again, I say for you as a woman at the time where it was less common, you know, the amount of work was likely more. Um, and what I really hear is like, you know, it wasn't manipulative. It wasn't, you know, with an ulterior motive in mind, you just understood, Hey, if, if I do want to move up, there's the personal development that I have to do. I have to be good. And I also have to be able to make connections, relationships with other folks in the organization because that's how things work. And so i um, being able to understand that. Um, just as we, you know, begin to, to finish up, uh, you know, I found that people learn their best lessons in leadership, in work and in life, usually if they've got their butts kicked a little bit. Um, and so I won't ask you what being in the cruise industry was like in 2020, unless you absolutely want to talk about that. But, uh, you know, in your, let's call it early days of leadership, what was a lesson that you learned either from yourself or that uh, a mentor taught you um, that, that probably came out of a failure or a strong learning? Um, well, you know, I've. it's always nice to think about the successes and they're certainly meaningful in your career, but I think the failures are even more meaningful and you learn a lot more from your failures than you do from your successes. And none of us like to fail. I hate to fail. It hurts my ego. Um, I feel like I let myself down. I feel like I let other people down and I hate to let myself and other people down. So failure is always really uncomfortable for me. But I think that, you know, I had one failure. It was 2008. We were starting up a new brand 
and I was new in operations and I was new in my role and I didn't have a I didn't have a good and strong team that was doing everything they needed to do to make sure the outcome was going to be successful and I didn't know the right questions to ask. I was still too new and the combination of those things really created a perfect storm where everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And it was a real mess that we had to clean up. The ship wasn't ready. The experiences weren't ready. The guests were were upset with us. Our travel partners were upset with us. The press were upset with us. Um, And I had to fix it. And I had to think about how I was going to do that. But what I learned as a leader is the best in people comes out in the worst of times. And you probably find the people that are the gems that you didn't realize were there when you need help in getting yourself out of a situation where you failed. I also learned as a leader, you need to say, I failed. You know, I did something wrong here because if I was doing everything I needed to be doing, we wouldn't be in this situation. So you need to admit that. You need to be okay admitting admitting that. And you need to show vulnerability where you ask people for help so that you can all get out of the mess that you find yourself in. And I think by doing those things, I rallied people around me in a way that I probably wouldn't have if that situation didn't occur. And those, I also believe at that time, I gained more respect as a leader than in any other time during my career. And the last thing I did was I didn't leave. I stayed to clean up the mess. I stayed with the crew. I stayed with the rest of the shoreside team that was on the ship for seven weeks until we righted the ship, if you pardon the bad pun. And I think as a leader, you need to do that. You need to lead from the front. You need to be part of the solution and you can't leave it to other people to clean up the mess. And uh, I think that those were a lot of the valuable lessons that I learned uh, in leadership at that particular time. Excellent. And then I, and, and let's look at the after. What what happened after that from uh, 2008 to, you know, 2023? Um, I imagine that you have, you know, a great team around you. You had a lot of respect. You had that, you know, experience under your belt to say, hey, I won't do that again. But also exactly. the wisdom to know what to ask. Yeah. Yeah. No, then, you, I, then I made sure I built a strong team. I changed out a lot of the team. Uh, a lot of the people that were with me during that experience uh, grew in the organization along with me because they really showed how good they were. Um, I got a lot closer to them. I was able to see what their talent was and recognize it and, and uh, help them achieve their own career aspirations. Um, I learned to phone a friend. You know, that's another thing that um, that I talk about because it's if you don't know everything and there's going to be a lot of times in your career where you you take on a role or you're promoted into a role where you're not the subject matter expert and you don't know everything but i guarantee you there are other people in the organization that either work for you work with you or that you know in the organization that know more than you do about that and you need to phone a friend and ask for help i call it phoning a friend and what i found by doing that asking people for help and admitting i didn't know everything was that people become personally invested in your success. They're flattered that you ask them for the help. They give you everything they have in terms of helping you. And um, and they feel successful when you're successful. And I learned to do that as well. And throughout my career, I've always tried to surround myself with people that knew more than I did because I felt like it made me a better leader and made us a better team and got us better results. I think some leaders feel like they need to be the smartest person in the room. And if they're not, then that's, you know, they're admitting, you know, if you admit you're not the smartest person in the room, they look at that as a weakness. I look at it as a strength. And it's always served me really well um, in my career and also being able to um, be promoted throughout my career. Yeah, absolutely. And I bet that that, I'll use the word humbleness um well like allowed other people when you did get into a jam to to be able to help you whereas leaders who think they know it all everybody's like well you've known it all in the past kind of yep. like peter kreibold's yeah. kind of thing you'll figure it out so uh, exactly. Lisa, just as, as we finish up here tell folks uh, about the book um you know what's in it why did you think about it um and then we will say goodbye for today Okay. Um, the book is Making Waves. It's available at Barnes and Noble, Amazon.com, anywhere books are sold. Um, I wrote it because so many people told me I should write a book uh, based on my career, based on all the things that I was able to accomplish, based on all the things I did to help people along the way um, and advance their own careers, uh, based on the fact that I was a champion of gender balance in our industry, in an industry that had none. 
And everybody said, you need to write a book and share your stories. And so after I heard that multiple, multiple, multiple times, I said, okay, maybe, maybe I'll try this. It took me six years. Um, COVID got in the middle of it. So, you know, that, that stalled me for about a year and a half, but now it's finally out and I'm really excited. And I really did write it with the intention. It's dedicated to my two nieces who are in their twenties, who give me so much hope and inspiration. And I hope there are nuggets in there for them as well, that as they're navigating their life and their career, they'll learn uh, a lesson or two from all the things that I was able to learn along my way. Awesome. I appreciate that. And just from our short experience today, everything that you've said is very practical, tactical, clear. And I bet that that's how the book is as well. Not jargony because, you know, you lived it, you experienced it and you want to make it uh, you just generous and you've been extremely generous today. So Lisa, thank you so much for, for sharing with us today. I super appreciate you joining me on the podcast and I wish you nothing but success um, in whatever life takes you and, and also to your nieces moving forward. Thank you so much, Anthony. It was an absolute pleasure. Take care, my friend. Likewise. Folks, my guest today, Lisa Lutoff Perlo, um, sharing her experience as the former CEO at Celebrity Cruises. Uh, one of the things that I'm taking away from this just as a leader is, you know, you learn from those things, you grow from those things, and that's what makes you better. If you don't put yourself in situations, although in hindsight, you might have not wanted to be in that situation, uh, but coming out of it is the thing that catapults that. So don't avoid failing. Failure is the precursor to success. Um, especially in you know whatever lasting career you want to be in. So Lisa, thank you again for being here, folks. My name is Anthony Taylor. This has been the Strategy and Leadership Podcast. I encourage you and invite you to share this with somebody uh, in their career trying to like really build up what they can accomplish because you can go from entry level all the way up to CEO and Lisa is the proof. So once again, thanks for being here. This has been the Strategy and Leadership Podcast. My name is Anthony Taylor. I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Strategy and Leadership Podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider giving us a review. We appreciate you listening and following along, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. And as Anthony says, until next time.